Hey guys, welcome back to the Brickmaker channel for another Fallout video. And today I'm going to be bringing you a challenge suggested to me by the Casual Loop. If you guys don't know, the Casual Loop also makes great Fallout challenges, so I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below. His comment suggested playing the game through as someone from the Van Graphs. As you can see with the comment on screen, he had a couple of different restrictions and rules and things that I had to complete for the challenge run to be successful. Those being only using the Plasma Caster and not the Smitty Special, so that could be a future video. A Vangraph Combat Armor at all times with no headgear. Must complete all the Vangraph questline. Must kill all travelling merchants or caravans on site. Side of Mr. House, be very anti-Legion, but also have an uneasy alliance with the NCR, but wiping out the Brotherhood and the Gunrunners. And the main difference for this channel I have to play the game on very hard plus hardcore with zero companions. I just want to say once more, thank you so much, Casual Loop, for the challenge. I had a lot of fun doing this and a lot of a lot of uh, frustration as well at certain points. I'm sure you all see throughout the video. But yeah, with all the introductions out of the way, let's ask the question: Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as a member of the Van Graphs? I wake up in the office feeling like Doc Mitchell. I pick my name, it's Brick Van Graff. It's time to hit New Vegas. No, I promise, I've seen the comments, I'm gonna try and sing less. I know, I know it can be painful. So yeah, let's have a look at the stats. I picked something that goes heavily into energy weapon builds, not really needing any sort of agility or charisma, even though charisma's a dead stat. I picked medicine, energy weapons and barter, and I forget to put on hardcore mode just i think out of complete habit at this point for starting fallout new vegas runs you see where i do remember that yes indeed i have to go into my gameplay and shove on all the different difficulties so very difficult and hardcore is on as you could see i even go back just to double check one more time to make sure it was on I do decide when I change my skills to put on lockpick instead of barter because I did believe that I would maybe have to steal the Van Graaff combat armor from the crate. Um, that was in my first recording and my little bit of pre-research beforehand. But despite all that, I do have to start making my way towards the Van Graaff so I can begin the quest line. And also pick up all the equipment I'll need for this run because you can pretty much get all of it from the Van Graaffs. On my way to the Black Mountain shortcut, I decided to pick up all the Brotherhood armor and the codes for later, use a little glitch through the door, hand myself right back out, and run and jump off of the fence. Now before I got to the boulder rolling down the hill, I actually did stop this recording, and I picked it up a couple hours later, and it was at that point in between that I did a little bit extra research. Within that research, I learned that you can actually pick up a set of combat armor which has the graphics of the Van Graaff combat armor. As you can see here, this Van Graaff thug that you pick up, that you would have met during Cassidy's storyline, you can actually take his combat armor. And although it's not called Van Graaff combat armor, it has the exact same display, but not the same DT. So for now, this will have to do. I arrive in free side with a, a pretty uneventful journey to here. Sit my eyes on the silver rush and do a hop, skip and a jump over the car so I can go see Simon. Simon gives me an old pat on the butt. And it's here why I have to watch my, well, in my storyline, my brother and sister. I am the long, the long lost uh, son, Brick, Brick Van Graaff. And I have to watch them uh, murder this guy. And, you know, I, I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of it in this run. I decide to take... All of the stuff within the Silver Rush, because I would say it's technically not stealing. It's also my family business. I'm just a little bit low on caps, you know, with the whole getting shot in the face thing. And hey, Gl Gloria, don't even bring it up. So to me, it's all good. It's all good. But with that, we can take a look at the main, the final boss. This is Brick Van Graaff, more or less in his, you know, finished form. This is what I'm going to pretty much have for this whole run. This armor and the plasma caster. But hopefully the plasma caster will have better condition throughout this run. Because, uh, yeah, they don't sell any except for the Smitty Special, which I can't afford and can't use either. But with all the stuff I've sold from my family business, you know, a bit of profit, 
I am able to use the 2000 caps to get myself into the Vegas Strip and go speak to Mr. House. As I said at the start, uh, Casual Loop believed that Mr. House was the best faction for the Van Graffs to pick, as they're very focused on money. So, in the spirit, I also sell off my snow globes. Forgot about the snow globe in Good Springs and had to run back and get it, and decided to pick up the cigarette butts while I'm there, and get myself 6,000 caps worth of snow globes. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I need to go speak to Mick, because he's the only one. And this is something that I had to use throughout the run quite a lot. Mick is the one that you can repair. And all the caps that you've used, you can then sell other stuff back to him to get them back. You can't do that at the Mojave Outpost. But with me having a pretty good conditioned Plasma Caster, I'm able to take on the first Fangraph quest. Guarding the door with Simon. Now Simon gives you Vangraph combat armor, but you can't keep it at the end of this quest. And he actually says specifically, don't use heavy weapons, but it's it's all I got. This plasma cast is all I got. It's a pretty uneventful, pretty long and boring quest until the gambler turns up, the man, the myth, the legend, who's uh, going to try and run in here and you know cause some trouble. But I'm a I'm a very good man at my job. I maintain the, what Simon taught me, and yeah, this is the first fight that I've had with the plasma caster. And first two shots might have missed, but yeah, it's a pretty good one hit at the end there. No matter what, Gloria will replace you, which kind of hurts being her uh, younger brother. But she gives you another task to go meet this, um, well, it says strange man and he's cowering. Um, he must he must know the, the legend of Brick. I am Brick. I give him a strange package that Gloria gave me instead of just guarding the door. I gotta do the footwork. And she lets me know that old John Baptiste Cutting, or oh, what name? What name um, has another quest for me? To go get Rose of Sharon Cassidy. Now, in my research for that quest, I know that you need at least 50 barter or 50 speech. So taking my points off of barter, putting them on lockpicking and not lockpicking anything was a really smart choice at the start of this game. But with that, that's a good spot to start beginning the main quest. As I need to get some points, I need to get some XP, I need to get some levels so I can up my barter. I grab all the magazines on the strip and head into the tops. It's here where I've not went to Boulder City at all, so I've only got 15 speech and uh, cigarettes to speak to Swank with, so at this point he only gives me enough leeway to attack Benny and his guards, but no extra help other than that. But I do get a level up, I'm able to put all my points right into butter. I get another two free level ups there, and at which point I'm already ready to go see Rose of Sharon Cassidy. But I'm already here, so I might as well continue on with the main quest and speak to Benny. Oh, Benny's as shocked as ever, and as Gloria said in the start of the game, you don't break faith with the Van Graaff. And that guy got shot too. So, I think shooting me in the face, I think it's only fair that I shoot you all back. And it's here why I have my first big group fight. Now, I think now is a good point to say. I have never played Fallout New Vegas on survival mode and completed it. Mainly out of, I find I find very hard fun, but hardcore mode survival mode I find very tedious. Um, I feel like it doesn't add that much difficulty. I feel like it just adds in more chores and busy work. But for the challenge for casual loop, I am gonna leave it in. And it's here where I found, you know, usually when you fight. The, the chairman's bodyguards and Benny, you've usually got, I mean, I've got combat armor and a heavy weapon and it was, it was a hard fight. I must admit, I nearly, I nearly died. But with the platinum chip in hand, I go back to speak to Mr. House. He shows off his toys to me, which is, um, cool bro, um, nice to see. And decide that I better go speak to Alice McLaughlin. Now, Casual Loop never mentioned anything about the Crimson Caravan or helping them or not helping them. But, the Crimson Caravan and the Van Graffs actually have a pretty decent relationship, so I thought it would also make sense to help out Alex McLafferty throughout the playthrough. Plus, you need her anyway to get rules to follow you, so eh, two birds for one stone kind of thing. I never went in the way of Prim uh, at the start of the game, so I have to make that trip to the Mojave Outpost the long way from Good Springs. And while I'm passing Prim, I thought oh, I might as well, you know, save the town. Not, not for anyone else, just for some XP. N nothing to do really with a character. It's here where the plasma caster starts to show its real big downside. 
Now when it comes to most heavy weapons, it's slow reload, heavy damage, heavy output. And for the plasma caster itself, it does have high damage. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it takes them on one hit, unless they've got really good armor. Two or three after that. But it's slow to reload. And it's only got 10 shots in its magazine. Even the anointment of Prim Slim can't cheer me up because the 10 shots and especially big group fights I found was was one of the main reasons I was losing a lot of my health because of the hardcore and survival mode here. With that, I decided to take my frustrations out on a Malco Holmes that is ballering down this hill at me. I mean, he is determined to get to me, but no, not today. Arriving at the Mojave Outpost, speaking of Major Knight, I get this kind of weird glitch where his repair skill is only 31 instead of 100, which it's kind of strange, but I decided to speak to Cass. It's here that I forgot that you have to speak to her first, then go all the way back to Alice McLafferty, which isn't a big problem, but every time you fast travel, it does jump your food and water and sleep stuff up quite a bit, so it's, it's here where I decide that I want to get as many of the Crimson Caravan quest done now, and so I don't have to keep hopping back and forth. With that, I decided to take on the Gunrunners, and this was one of the most challenging fights that I've ever had with the Gunrunners, and maybe with any of these challenge runs so far. The Gunrunners have very good armor, they have combat armor just like mine, but their hunting rifles and caravan shotguns, when get close enough, they do huge damage, especially I think because it's on very hard, they aim for the head a lot and I don't have any headgear. So they're just shooting me pretty much where I don't have any armor. I also have to leave them alive long enough so that they can run out and open the gate because I don't have high enough lockpick because I stopped putting any points into it. So again, I did do my research, but I feel like there was a lot of mistakes made when it came to lockpicking. I I, just, I have committed and ended up getting nothing for it. Look how frustrating my character is. His head is trying to leave the body. Trying to go back to his home planet. The planet of the bricks. The strategy that I found for the gunrunner guard was to take out one and just to leave one left to run out and open the gate for me. On this run here, it worked out pretty well. Once he was reloading, I was able to just, just kind of spam all 10 shots. But you can see there a combat armored uh, enemy. 10 shots to the chest and it's maybe 60-70% of their health. And I'm sorry, that's fine. But I need more than just 10 shots. It's just, it's simply not enough for a weapon that reloads this slow. But with the guards taken out, I'm finally able to enter the Gunrunner compound and surprise, surprise, I was quite lucky. They were all in their beds. So I was able to come in and take all the kind of expensive weapons that I could and then grab the hollow tape for Alice McLafferty. McLafferty. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong there. But the challenge said to wipe out the Gunrunners, so I can't just leave with all the, the goodies in hand. I gotta make sure I take out all the people within. Luckily for me, the gunsmiths don't have good armor and they don't have any good helmets either. It's only a couple of guards that I've got to worry about. And it's a similar technique that I had to use outside. Took all my 10 shots into one of them or use vats as well to hit them in the head and then immediately run behind cover so I can reload. I've seemed to noticing now as well that small arms like the 9mm pistols and stuff they don't do that good of damage because I'm wearing combat armor for such a, like an early stage. So I was noticing that when it was hitting it, my armor kept popping up and my health wasn't really going down. So it's really important to know because again, this is the first time ever very hard and hardcore mode. It shows that if I'm ever in a big group fight, I should focus on the heavy weapons first, hunting rifles, submachine guns especially and anything that kind of breaks through DT and then leave the small arms to the end because I can, I can sponge 9mm all day. I just can't take the 308s and the 5mm and stuff like that. With that, I take all my loot to Mick and I use the same technique. I repair my plasma caster and then get all my caps back by selling him the stuff that I just looted. And now I can finally head over to Cass and buy Cassidy Caravan. With that, I'm able to use the 50 barter and she'll now become my companion. 
Now I know in the notes, Casual Loop said no companions, so I want to try and get rid of Cassidy as quick as possible. So with that, I'm not going to be doing any questing that involve combat. I quickly stop by Henry Jameson and head right over to the Silver Rust to speak back with John Baptiste. It's always a difficult thing doing something like this. I always feel like companions are sacred in these games. So watching one get taken out is, ah, even doing the play for it was hard to watch, but it's part of the Vangraph storyline. You can't progress unless you bring Rose here. So Cass has to go to be able to finish the storyline. John Baptiste takes far too much pleasure in that. And Gloria offers me the final questline for the Vangraphs. Now obviously the Vangraphs are a side quest or a side family. I never thought their questing would be like very, very long, like the main storyline. But I was surprised at how quick I was able to get to this point. We're here with the Legion. They're pretending to do a gun deal to, to sell some stuff. And then boom, we start flying out and attacking with the NCR. And this is where casual loop stipulation of have a uneasy alliance with the NCR comes in because the Van Graffs and the NCR hate each other back in California. But in this game, they have a bit of a, eh, we hate you, but we'll work together because, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of thing. So that's where the uneasy alliance comes from. So, so far in the game, I've got just a neutral alliance with the NCR. And if I ever get it up to something like accepted or liked by accident, I'll have to bring it right back down. But if I ever do bring it down below neutral, that's not a problem. I can just keep it there. Van Graaf's finished. I might as well go and finish the Crimson Caravan as well. Get attacked by a bottling robot for no reason. On my way to go take out the cat press, which I'm always being annoyed that I can't use. But it's strange I got a reputation reminder for that. And although I kill him, I still like Oliver Swanick more than Knight Titus. It's at this point I decide to start making my way towards Cottonwood Cove, to continue on the main storyline. But on my way, I get absolutely swarmed by a bunch of ghouls near this uh, Legion safe house. And I decide to show off my nice a magic trick of flipping my pants and shirts off as quick as possible so I can run a little bit faster. And when I arrive at the Matthew farm, I'm able to use a, a bit of an interesting technique here. I didn't know that ghouls would aggro onto just random animals. Um, and it's here where I'm able to finally lose my ghoul horde and uh, make my way towards Camp Searchlight without any, any, any more attacking on me. Mainly just not to waste ammo. I arrive at Cottonwood Cove and although I've got a hated reputation, I still have the Mark of Caesar so I can still pass through at this point without having to fight my way through the entire Legion. It's a bit of a frosty introduction to the camp and I'm able to finally meet Caesar. It's here where he actually explains to me how it was me that disrupted the, the deal. Um, I thought that was Gloria. Sins of the sister much. Like, that really doesn't make sense. He he says it as if I orchestrated that attack. That was all Gloria. It's, I don't know. It just seems really, it, I feel like he's got the wrong information there. Anyway, I start fighting my way through the bunker. Not too much of a problem. The plasma catcher does pretty good damage against robots. Install the platinum chip and head back and give Mr. House the good news. It's here where I have one of the longest recording sessions that I think I've had in terms of one single kind of obstacle to overcome. And also a very, very big reminder of how much more difficult this run will be compared to previous runs. I feel this attack of the fort a lot. And I'm not gonna show you every single failed attempt because I think this video is already gonna be pretty long. But this, these Legion soldiers, I mean, unarmed attacks do huge damage on me anyway. But, I mean, I can't even get out. I can't even escape. I mean, uh, but the, the unarmed attacks do huge damage. And because it's on very hard, the Legions that have weapons, I mean, it feels like all they do is hit me in the head. And as previously stated, this plasma caster doesn't hold a lot of ammo. So taking out huge groups of enemies is very difficult. So I had to come up with a pretty, a pretty difficult um, method, but one that worked. I had to focus on any legion that had weapons. I had to then grab those weapons to make sure I was holding them so people couldn't pick them up. 
and I just had to, you know, like Call of Duty zombies, train them around the tents, turn around and shoot, uh, reload, take the armor off so I can run quicker than them, and then just keep doing it over and over again. And even then, it wasn't a sound technique. I still died quite a lot during this. I mean, I mean, God, I mean, look at that. What a shot. I mean, when I was taking out, this is here that I realized that if I took out an enemy with a weapon, a Praetorian guard will pick it up and just start shooting at me, in which at that point it was a death sentence. So I had to run up the hill, aggro all the melee characters to chase me. I then had to shoot any of the we guys that had weapons so they couldn't hit me from range. And then just run around these tents, hit my 10 shots into them, reload, take off the armor, run. Turn around, repeat, repeat, repeat. Aiming for the legs so I could slow them down as well at certain points. I mean, from now on, I'm going to remember for any real life situation. Now, if I'm ever, if I'm ever being shot at from a distance, to use tent because, my God, the tents were an absolute godsend. In terms of attacking Caesar's camp, I do my usual tactic of pop my head in, pop my head out, and get all the soldiers to aggro onto me. The good thing about Caesar's tent is that none of them have weapons and at this point I've already run around and picked up all the guns that I can in the camp so none of them can run off and get one and I lead them into my little my little cavern my little my little death death snake down here because this one metal pole is enough just to lock all the guards behind it and as you can see I'm not doing particularly well in terms of ammo so I have to be very careful with the ammo that I'm using and it's it's here that there's so many guards stuck behind the metal pole that some of them are starting to pop through. So I need to thin them out quicker than usual. I mean, luckily for the most part, it still worked pretty well. And I think I pretty much leave this camp with about four rounds left. I mean, I've still got 70 of the normal ammo left here. And luckily there's not enough characters left that they can pop through. So they're all stuck behind the metal post and... Only Volpez and Caesars left so I can take my time and slowly take them out. Caesar's the last one left and yep. He can he built a legion. He built he took over what is it, 87 tribes, but he uh, he can't figure out the metal post in the middle. And with that, Brick Van Graaf can stand over the fort as as the man that wiped out the Legion. Reporting back to Mr. House, I tell him the good news. And I crack on with the main quest. First place to go, right over to the boomers to meet with old George. I am, however, completely sideswiped by the Legion. I mean, I don't think I've ever had the Legion assassins get me here at this point. Maybe because I attacked the fort a lot earlier in the main story. Um, maybe after this point, I never really returned to this bit. But yeah, like it's to the point where even George sprints into the... He would rather take his chances with the, the bombs than he would with the Legion assassins. And I mean, in my... Uh, kind of fit of being distracted I get blown up a few times there I do eventually reach the gates and I'm able to speak to Raquel who eventually takes me straight over to Pearl and I can start helping the boomers in terms of what I think the Van Graffs would do with the boomers I think yeah if they're willing to help and offer their artillery to them I think they would make that alliance because with the NCR it's an uneasy alliance but with the boomers they're offering complete trust so why Why would we not take the opportunity to speak to the old Pete and ask him some questions? But this time though, I forgot to pick up any scrap metal, so I have to go take out the ants. Luckily, I've put a little bit into my science skills, so I don't have to wipe out every single ant with my plasma caster, because one, the ants take forever to spawn in, and two, as you're about to see, the, the ants do not react too well to, to plasma. However, placing the starting emitter speeds that quest straight up and I might start putting 50 into science every time I do a playthrough. But with that, I take my crippled butt straight over to Raquel and, you know, try and speed it up a little bit more when I am faced by another very strange occurrence. The Legion Assassins have now somehow spawned inside the Nels Air Force Base. I don't know if they somehow made it through the gate, if they made it through the bombardment, but they're here. And none of the boomers seem to care. Second attempt, I get on the ramp and still the Legion Assassins respawn, this time from further up north, so I don't think they ran through the gate. And 
I really don't know how to even explain this. I, I didn't know Legion Assassins could spawn in the Air Force Base, but my third attempt, I sprint as quick as I can, heal my crippled limbs and tell Raquel that God, I dealt with the ants, please just let me speak to Pearl. Lil lets me know about the wet lady he wants me to bring him. And I'd say to have a quick chat with this late luck. It's pretty nice in this moment. I mean, look at him. He lets me even ride him a little bit. I can, if you jump up and land on him, you can swim about with him a little bit. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, I was going to say it's the quickest way to cross the lake. It's certainly not. It takes forever. But me and this late luck's mating dance seems to attract other late lucks. And I mean, look at this. We're having a party. But similar to my method, this late luck stands on another late luck and is able to use its its attack, which I did not know they could do. I do eventually reach the, the plane and I attach one ballast, but the late lucks are still pretty much on top of me. And once I get my breath and head back down, I am unfortunately, I don't know from where, I am completely sniped by a late luck. I decide to, to do the approach a little bit different this time and uh, get my fill of the water. I also decided to head back and get the rebreather from Jack since my science skill is high enough, attach the ballast and use Loyal's detonator to raise his woman from the lake. Loyal and Pearl seem pretty happy about that. And with the boomers fully on my side, I decide to head over to the Hidden Valley Bunker. Now if you don't remember from the start of the video, Casual Loot said that I have to wipe out the Brotherhood, which I do normally have to do in these videos but uh with the, the hardcore mode on and the, the very hard difficulty i mean this this was the toughest fight i've ever had with the brotherhood of steel i think when i did the beat fought new vegas as kratos and i only used boxing tape i think that was easier than using a plasma caster with combat armor with the up difficulty, I am sure that these guys aim for the head and hit it with every shot. And especially the tribe laser, I mean, they are never missing my head. And even just to get through the front door, which is, to be fair, usually the hardest part of, you know, attacking the bunker. It took me so many attempts, so many attempts fighting these goddamn tin cans. If you get trapped in the corner, you, you don't have enough ammo in the plasma caster to even take out one soldier with one with one full magazine or clip or cell whatever you use so it's just it's it was me doing different attempts to try and take out one person as quick as possible just so like if i can get one on one use that i can usually take out a paladin no problem it's when you got them in groups and you're trying to because there's a lot of the sides of these have backs that don't have any cover or sides that don't have cover. So a lot of it is run, hide, run, hide, shoot, run, hide, shoot. And trying to get them one on one as much as possible. And unfortunately Stimpak spamming does not work on hardcore mode. Stimpak slowly regenerate your health. So there's no sitting in a corner, one finger on the trigger, one finger on the Stimpak button. It's... You gotta take him out with more or less one health bar because if you try and hide in a corner and regen some health, I mean, they're coming straight for you. Saying that though, persistence is uh, a friend to all men and a man that has plenty of time to do it over and over again. And eventually I do break through the front door and meet one more Paladin with Paladin Ramos as well. And Paladin Ramos for some reason just has half the health of every other Paladin, so I don't know why he has that. But uh, he's not too difficult, and once I get down to the bottom level, I am met with another problem. Although I can funnel them into this small hallway up these stairs and get a bit of cover at the top, like, that tri-beam laser, they, they are getting me through the tiniest gap. I swear it bends up the, I swear it bends up the stairs. Like, they are able to hit me with such precision that running and hiding doesn't quite do it. So I have to use a different tactic, lead them through the door, use the doors and the loading screens to my advantage. So that brief bit of distraction, I'm able to get some shots in. But even then, with, with his back turned, he is still able to hit me a couple times. I also had to wait for a bit of luck because some of the paladins randomly will just take their helmets off. And if you hit their weapon enough, they'll try and hit you with their fists. So using those kind of exploits to my advantage, I'm able to take out the majority of the paladins. 
The soldiers with the recon armor, they're not too bad. They usually don't have any headgear. And even then, if you're hitting them in the center, right in the chest, it can usually do a good amount of damage. So one, one micro fusion cell, 10, is enough to get one of them down. I desecrate the Brotherhood of Steel Infirmary. Instead of creating a place of healing, I create a place of death. Look, look, his back is to me. He's still hitting me. I now face a new problem, the turrets. These are Mark VI turrets and it's very difficult to take them out with weapons. So I decided to take a smarter approach and head right down under the floor. Still though, two shots and I've lost half my health and got an, an armed crippled for it. So those Mark VI turrets, I'm, I'm not gonna mess with. I am, however, gonna keep messing with these paladins and lead them into my little kind of death corridor down here. Like I said before, if I can get them one on one and if they don't have a helmet, it's a much easier task than a, a huge grip. I make love to this sink so it'll give me some health back. And I get rudely interrupted during my rating Mitchell by another paladin. Now if there's one thing they say about the brickmaker, is don't get left alone in the bathroom with him. Because that's when you're gonna see him pull out his big old plasma caster and shoot it all over your face. Now with my health, it's, I'm starting to run a little bit low on supplies, so when it comes to this paladin, I've got to play a little bit of a, a rigmarole with him and let him run out and lock him out again. With that, I am literally sitting in the corner of a toilet, <laughs> waiting to attack people. But that's just the Van Graaff way. I mean, that is what Brick Van Graaff has on his, on his plaque above his bed when he talks about his family legacy. Is when you can't fight them one-on-one, -on -one, hide in the bathroom and wait until they come in to get them. That's what my father told me and his father before him. And it's what we will have on my headstone. Brick Van Graaff. Good father, better brother, bathroom lurker. Yeah, you like that. You like how I turn those tabs, don't you? Yeah. Show me the nozzle. Show me the nozzle. Um, <clears throat> um, I started heading deeper into the, to the bunker. And out of all three sections, this is probably the easiest. Because this is where you find mostly scribes and... Their armor is not up to snuff at all when it comes to this plasma caster. There is, however, some heavily armored enemies down here. There's two paladins that are guarding the elder, also paladin Harden, which we'll deal with later on. And I'm trying to get through this door, but for some reason, when you're reloading, you cannot get through doors. And I have to use a bit of a cheesy tactic here. Yeah, which one's hot? Show me the hot one. Yeah, that's a hot tap. How about a bit of cold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. Haven't you ever been told not to interrupt a man when he's working with his sink? You can get too familiar with sinks. This brotherhood initiate. Yeah, gonna initiate this sink on your face. Gonna initiate the hot water tap and burn you. And then I'm gonna use the soap to make sure my hands are clean because I don't want to get sick. <laughs> And I'm going to keep going on and finish off the Elder. He's playing hide and seek with me though and gets me a bit of a peekaboo in the corner. Luckily for me the Elder's robes are just scribe robes so they're just blue instead. So taking him out is probably one of the... For being the leader he's probably the easiest person I've had to take out so far other than scribes. Now to take out the bunker I need all three keys so i got to go fight Head Paladin Harden as well. Can't just leave him down here to go boom. And luckily for me I got a... Oh. Luckily for me, I get a nice quick headshot on him, a couple as well. The first shot gets through the helmet. And yeah, the battle with Head Paladin's not as difficult as it was the first time as I'm able to take him out with 10 shots. Oh, I just let that sink in. I face a problem that I haven't ever had to deal with before because I'm not a big user of plasma weapons. But when I take out Head Scribe Tacker in one shot, um, his goo, um, hmm, falls through the gap, which is, um, Means I have to redo all that one more time. And I'm just kind of hoping I don't gooify him this time. But with all three leaders dead, I'm able to generate a password and initiate the self-destruct feature. On the way out, I get a few extra shots in the butt, but yeah, don't worry about that. The self-destruction will finish them off, so I just gotta hope these turrets don't get me. I'm able to leave the bunker and finish off another one in the task, burying the Brotherhood of Steel in their bunker. With my limited places to buy ammo, I'm actually having to resort to conversion and recycling microfusion cells, which, again, 
it's a good tactic. I never used to ever use those ammo workbenches or workbenches before. But uh, when I went to go see Alexander about more ammo, I didn't have enough gun skills. And also, he's a gun runner. So, sir Alexander, you were a prick, but now you're gone. While I'm here, there's also one last Brotherhood of Steel member that I uh, should go say hello to as well, Veronica. And I let her know about the, the tin men that I just buried in the ground. And uh, yeah, she wasn't too happy about that. And Veronica, you know, the, it said to wipe out all the Brotherhood. So this is part of that task. Like I said, I always find it weird fighting with a potential companion. And it, it shows because they usually have a lot more health and they're a lot stronger than most NPCs in the game. But smart reloading, a good few critical shots, and yeah, Veronica goes down. Finally finishing off the Brotherhood of Steel. And with my sneak attack on the Gunrunner Guard and the Arms Merchant, I have also finished off completely the Gunrunners. This unfortunately aggroes the NCR onto me. Well, the NCR that's at its base at least. Instead of just running away, I thought the best thing to do is to allow the situation which is happening to develop as it normally would. And that also results with Michelle and Simon. No, Samuel. Uh, arguing on to me as well, which turns my reputation with the NCR from neutral to hated. I feel like hated's unfair. I mean, I was just shooting the gun runners. Why, why is this NCR heavy trooper really having a problem with me? Was it the arms merchant? Was it the gun runner guard? I'm not sure. But for this poor heavy trooper who, my god, he... It, he's strong, I'll give him that. I have to use this uh, this pillar as a, a nice shield as I take out the last little bit of his health. But with the NCR trooper down, I now have an uneasy relationship with the NCR. Instead of me going all the way up to see Mr. House and wasting time, I might as well just continue on his main storyline. And that involves going to see the Omeras. Now, the Omeras dealing guns, the Omeras dealing gambling. The Omeras are bad people. And I really don't think, especially Gloria Van Graaff and uh, their mother, who is the matriarch of the family, would approve of the Omeras to begin with, or even Kachino being in charge. So, despite Mr. House not wanting me to wipe them all out, I think the most appropriate thing for the Van Graaff family is to fully wipe out all of the Omeras. I say fully wipe out, I get taken down a few times myself in the process, I mean... Although they've got pretty much no armor, there's a lot of them. And their weapons are pretty powerful. The 10mm submachine gun melts my health. And the ones with the 44 Magnum, like, it's pretty much a headshot every time they shoot at me. I mean, I'm trying to take out the, the Gamora floor manager, and I mean, I, this takes floor manager to a whole different meaning. I mean, that guy is literally in the floor. And the most embarrassing part is, he kills me while he's in the floor. I do want to take this moment though to discuss what I've been thinking about with this run so far. It was different and it was fun and the spike in difficulty was a nice change of pace. However, what I will say for now, and you guys please leave a comment down below what you guys think. I want to use very hard for more of the challenges to, you know, really put that challenge in. I just don't think I'm going to be using the hardcore mode. And to tell Mr. House all the good news, I quickly go back to see if there's another task for me from the Van Graffs, and there is not. And I decide that I'm going to head over to Novak. For a couple of different reasons, there's a couple of different tasks that I wanted to make sure I got done for um, for Casual Loop. Now obviously there's a Legion and Nipton that I thought would be appropriate for me to take out. And also Brickmaker's curiosity got a little bit the better of me as well. I didn't know who was going to walk out that door, because I already took out Volpes in the fort. Gabin. I've never spoken to Gabin. I've never met Gabin. I don't think... Does he, is he does he exist in the game? Unless Volpez has been taken out before you get to Nipton? I think for a different playthrough, I might try and put on some Legion armor and come back here and see what Gabin has to say. See if the dialogue's any different. But anyway, for a little bit of health left, I take out Gabin and I head over towards Novak. Now the reason for that is because one of the stipulations was I had to take out any travelling merchants or caravans that I find just wandering in the wastes. And up until this point I'd never taken anyone out, no one had ever came past me really. 
So I thought the only appropriate thing to do would to go to the one that I know always spawns in when you pass through this bridge. The travelling merchant's heading over to Novak. And I thought, yep, just to make sure I get all the stipulations done, I thought I'd go wipe them out. Still, quite a difficult fight. Um, I imagine these guys don't really scale up with the player, but I was surprised at how much, you know, it took me quite a few shots. They got a lot of my health down, so I feel like if I'd done this earlier in the game, it would have probably been still quite difficult. However, though, in my excitement at taking out the merchants, I forgot about the vipers that wait for you behind this billboard. And I unfortunately and embarrassingly get taken out by a viper gunslinger with one health bar left because for some reason I had taken my armor off. And with that, I spawned back to the old Mormon fort, the place where I went just to get some medical supplies before I went to Nipton. That means I have to do that fight all over again with the merchants and with the legion and this time with the anger and the focus it was a much easier fight still at the same health by the end though i angrily hop my way to the bridge i have an even more difficult fight this time with the mercenaries because none of them run off and hide they all completely aggro onto me one at one time here i mean they're even throwing grenades at me this time it was not this difficult last time Thank you, Viper Gunslingers. The most pointless waste of a raider faction in this game. You wasted my time. You wasted the viewer's time. You wasted my health. You wasted my ammo. And you're gonna get it. The Legion are here. The Legion took them out this time. Why? My satisfaction needs to be quenched. Right, I'm going to the El Dorado substation. Now, I know Casual Loop said I gotta maintain an uneasy alliance, but this is the last thing I'm doing before I'm taking that whole Hoover Dam. So, what, when would be a better time, um, in your opinion, to, uh, to spring the trap on the NCR that, nah, although we've worked together a little bit in the past, the Van Graffs always remember, and the Van Graffs have got an opportunity with Mr. House. To really put a hurting on the NCR, so instead of being shunned and hated, it's time for me to go to full on vilified. Casual Loop, if you're watching, please leave a comment down below if that failed to run in your eyes. Also, all the viewers as well, I'd like, love to hear your opinion on it. But with that, I head back to Mr. House, let him know all the fantastic news, and get myself ready for the dam. It's another one of those playthroughs where I even forgot the great cans were in the game. I mean, I never went to Boulder City, I never went to Red Rock, so this is the first time I've seen them in this playthrough. And despite being vilified by both the NCR and the Legion, the Legion's totally aggroed onto me, but the NCR seems to be uh, pretty happy that I've turned up and accepting my help. The battle across the dam is pretty difficult. There's a lot of gunfire coming from a lot of different directions, and the Legion like to spawn out behind you as well from the towers. And at this point, I even, I'm down on my knees. I'm down on my knees. Help me. But it's definitely not just a, a run and gun, barrel my way through all the Legion and just wipe them out one by one. I, I, I gotta take my time, use my cover appropriately. But with that, I think it's uh, only an appropriate time to get the NCR to start hating me again. So I start taking out the heavy troopers that are in front of the office. I swear, the Securitron on other playthroughs is never this helpful. I wonder if the the AI and the strength of the Securitron is also increased because of the difficulty. I give myself the good news and he prints me out some paper. I catch a second glance at him in the window and say, Hey man, when'd you get here? Nice to see you. And take myself over to the switch so I can power up the dam, powering up the fort, powering up all the Securitrons for Mr. House. I get a lovely backdrop to all these Centurions attacking me with the fort going up on fire, despite there's no one there to, to be set on fire. And when I'm doing it at this point, I get some really nice one shots in third person. I think the Securitons must have like weakened them up, but I started feeling pretty I started feeling pretty sick when I was doing that. However, once I arrive at the Legates camp, it's time to start facing some of the Praetorian guards. Praetorians have never really been that much of a problem in the past for other playthroughs, but as you guys remember from the fort, they they pack a wall up and they have pretty good health as well and healing supplies, so one Praetorian guard is actually a pretty substantial amount of ammo to take down 
Thank God the Securitron here is just giving constant support. It is though time to take on the Legget. And I tried to do the nice little sneak like I did with my previous challenges to get onto the Legget. And when I tell you guys that this is one of the most time consuming most difficult fights I've had in any video game. I really do mean it. The Legget can pretty much one shot you if he gets a critical hit with his bumper sword. And other than that it's a two shot no problem. Plus he has constant Praetorian Guard support with him as well. On top of that as well veteran legionaries are going to start spawning all around the camp with him. And they're going to start hitting you with marksman carbines. They're going to run up with chainsaws. They're just going to get in the way. I mean, there's some attempts where I don't even get a shot on the leg. <laughs> I'm already down. I did have something very strange though. Halfway through the fight, the Legion decided to start his dialogue with me. I don't, I don't know how this glitch happened, but it never happened again after this attempt. Because in this attempt, even though I'm doing very well, just once he gets you with that bumper sword, he can. It's so frustrating. He can just take you out in one swing. It's here where I have to really start strategizing with the supplies that I've got. Now, unfortunately, I've been selling a lot of the chems as I've been playing because I don't like using I don't like using them because I feel like it makes the game a bit too easy. However, I've picked up a couple along the way that I didn't sell, and at this point, I this is no longer making it too easy. This is one of the hardest fights I've ever had to do. So, with a combination of some buff out, psycho, and turbo witch, oh. I'm starting to really fall in love with Turbo in this game. In previous runs I've been using Turbo to get past all the death claws at Quarry Junction. And it works exactly like Jet works in Fallout 4. It slows down time and makes everyone else a lot, a lot more kind of slow to react whereas you can move at more or less normal speed. And with Turbo activated you can pretty much get all 10 shots right onto the Legget without anyone to be able to react. And with that, I'm able to use the turbo to get him into his non-combative state. And then I'm able to hit some vats. And I'm able to finish off the leg finally. Now this fight alone, I think took me close to an hour and a half. Which, a lot of casual playthroughs take four hours to finish. So, uh, the fight with the leg, yeah, it was... It was difficult, it was challenging, and I had to use chems to finish it, but... I was actually really, really happy with myself when I finally took him out. And with that, I decided just to quickly stop the game during the fight and just show that hardcore mode is still on and the difficulty is still very hard. Just in case anyone thought I threw the difficulty down for this fight. For a lot of these challenges by the end, I, you get a sense of achievement, but it's just about completing it. With this playthrough, the sense of achievement of taking out the leg and getting that little notification that I can go see General Oliver. You know what? It made it it lit a spark right back up. Like a spark up my ass of being like, yeah, yeah, that is that is a real achievement I just did. That was that was really hard fought for. And with that I Sarah Smolensley walk into the white light and finish off the game to speak to Lee Oliver. But I forgot. This is very hard. This is hardcore mode. And General Lee Oliver decided that no Brickmaker, instead of, you know, watching that 30 to a minute long white cutscene with all the stuff I've got to say and you got to wait for me to walk all the way in. I won't just take you out once. I'll take you out twice. Just, just to spend more of your day in pointless dialogue. So I do the only uh, brave thing and the second I'm out of dialogue, I run and hide around the corner and allow my Securitrons to finish off the guards. And get the last couple of shots into General Lee Oliver. Speak to Mr. House, proving that yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas as a member of the Van Graaff family. Wow, um, wow, that was, that was one of the longer videos <laughs> I had to record. Um, I'd already had a, a recording done before this, but I decided that I want to get this one done and edited before that. Um, because I wanted to get the video for Casual Loop um, done as soon as I could. I did, I had a lot of fun playing this one. That was a really good suggestion from the Casual Loop. And it's something I probably would have never thought of myself, the Van Graffs, because just it's a, a kind of a faction and a storyline within this game that I 
usually tend to, not avoid, but miss or briefly uh, interact with. But if you guys have enjoyed this, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, leave any challenges that you think would be fun for me to do in the comments below. I add them to a list and I try and get through them when I can. I also just want to remind you as well, I've got a Discord that I'd love for you guys to join. I've also got a Twitter, they're all down in the description below. If you guys have got to this point in the video, I mean, thank you. But I also want you guys to write Looper in the comments so I can see who's getting to these points. That's for Casual Loop and also Looper. Because that's a move I also watched recently. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.